protein, they are also molecules. So that's why to differentiate these things, we better to call it as a DNA-based marker. So when you call it as a DNA-based, so the things become very, very clear or crystal clear that this is different from those isozyme or the biochemical markers. Now friends, interesting thing about this molecular marker is that it is present in three different places, maybe nuclear DNA, maybe mitochondrial or chloroplast DNA. And the other important thing is that it follows Mendelian pattern of inheritance. Now, if I quickly ask you this question, that what you mean here, in this case, molecular markers, that it follows Mendelian pattern of inheritance. Does it mean that you will see that three is to one ratio? Or does it mean that you will see here one is to two is to one ratio? But in a very simple term, friends, we can say that if I'm a product of my father and mother, I will inherit some of those markers from my father and some of markers from my mother. So I'm a hybrid from my mother and father. So I will inherit some of those markers. So that's why we are telling that it follows that Mendelian pattern of inheritance. So now after this, once I analyze my DNA, definitely I'll be able to see uh, about those one is to two is to one ratio. So that is about Mendelian pattern of inheritance. Now, as I mentioned you that we will have to study about the polymorphism because all molecular markers are basically running with this principle of polymorphism. Now, what is the polymorphism? If you see the literal meaning of this term, polymorphism is a hybrid word, just like I'm telling, poly and morph. Poly means many and morph means forms. So means you will have to find the different forms or more than one forms. If you get only one form, that is called that is called monomorphism. Yes, this is a opposite of polymorphism. Okay, friends. Now let us see a little bit in a lighter way what that polymorphism means. I am giving you photographs. Can you identify these two personalities? Are they same or different? Same, but appearing different, right? Okay. What about this beautiful girl? What about these four ladies? Are they same or different? Same, if they are same, they will be monomorphic. Or if they are different, you will be polymorphic. So you see, one person appearing in different forms. So they're polymorphism. We'll see in a different, different. This is just to keep your attention attached to this uh, presentation. All right, now let us go to the DNA because we are talking about DNA bus or molecular markers. Here you see, we have a gel. In this gel, there are different individuals and you see that there is DNA, DNA banding patterns. Now, if you see quickly, see all those DNA bands looks like same. Are there any differences? Differences mean in terms of height. Some is tall, some is here, some is lower. Is it so? No, all are in different, all are in the same form. So we call it as a monomorphic forms. What about this, this J? Here you see there are nine individuals. Out of those nine, the first three, they are giving a band of almost one kind. The second, four, uh, four, five, six, they are giving a band of almost same types. And the final, that nine, this is giving another band, but eight is missing. Now, if you see critically, this band looks like this three, and these three are same. Now, how many different types of bands are here? If you kind types of band, here you see there is only one type of band. But here, if you see this three and one, one type and this three, one type. So basically you can say, or you have two different types of bands here. When you say two different types, means two different alleles. So if I ask you to count the number of alleles in this gel, you have to kind of count like this, that band may be more, but types to, to only two types of bands. So you say there are two alleles. Here you can see, you can test your knowledge about this alleles, how many alleles you can count from here to here. If you find one type, this is a different type, this is a different, because you cannot find a band of the same height in any other individual, okay? So that way you have to count that how many different types of band. I'm giving a, a practical example from our own work. Here you see, can you identify this plant? Okay, this is actually a wild type soybean. It's a tendril, okay, climbers. And this is cultivated soybean. Now we extract DNA from both and test with different markers. 
Here is you see 12 pairs of marker, 12 pairs. So we'll see one by one. In the first pair, you see both the bands are of same height. So it means of similar type, so monomorphic. But if you come to this marker number four, here you see one band is upper side, one band is lower side. So it means they are polymorph. Marker is same, band different. So that is why we call the polymorphic. You see pair number seven. Here you see there is a crystal clear differences between the bending patterns in two individuals. This band coming from cultivated, this band coming from wild type. So this marker is very polymorphic marker. So in practical purpose, we need to use those polymorphic markers only. Now, where from those polymorphism comes? So now let us one by one, we'll not discuss in detail, but at least you must uh, have the basic information because you may think where from they're coming. One is your base substitution. In the DNA sequence, in, in place of one nucleo, one nitrogenous base, if another base comes, so that leads to polymorphism. We'll see some example. Insertion, deletion, transposons, chromosome elaboration means there may be some duplication, inversion, translocation. They also lead to source of DNA polymorphism. Recombination happens, but normally recombination happens in equal manner. But sometimes there is a slippage or there are unequal crossing over. So that also may lead to your recombination. So uh, that is polymorphism. So there are different uh, sources. Now, just an example so that we can quickly uh, go ahead. Here you see this is a sequence GAATTC. If you remember quickly, then you will see that this is the sequence of a restriction enzyme, cutting site, a restriction site. Can you recall the name which restriction enzyme cuts here? Means site for which restriction enzyme? This is the site, restriction site. You are perfectly correct, EQR1. So EQR1 is here. So in the first here, first case, GAATTC, it will cut here, similarly the case. So from this, you will get a, is a segment of, of this much length, this green color, this much length. In the variety number two, what happened? This restriction site got changed. You see, GAA, -A. in place of A, you have got a C here. So there is a base substitution. Now, when there is a C in place of A, now restriction enzyme cannot cut here. So this restriction site is lost. So now restriction enzyme will go ahead and find another site nearby. So he got another one here. Now, if you start from there to and go to this restriction site, now this segment is now getting longer. So if you see these two segments now compare, there is a size difference. So we call this polymorphism is, is because of the length. So we call length polymorphism. All right. Where do you get those restriction enzyme? This is you find the bacteria that they use it as their own defense mechanism. When this virus, bacteriophage attacks the bacteria, when it puts it here, then bacteria cut this DNA in, in place of those restrictions. So you can find more than 3000 restriction enzymes. How they do it, we'll just see here, just an important example. So here you see, this is a restriction site. So now it will cut and from here you are getting two different segments. You see, we are getting two different segments here. Now, if you say individual one, what happened? There are four restriction sites. Now you are getting five different bands. Okay, five different segments of different length. Now individual two, here you have got three restriction site. One restriction site now got lost. So now out of those, now you have got a different size of bands. Now, if you put them together, here you see in the gel, now from individual one, you are getting this five different bands and from, I'm sorry, this is individual two. So in individual two, you are getting four different bands. So same restriction enzyme. Now you are getting different types of bands and all those bands are different. So that's why we call this as a length polymorphism. That is what we are going to use in different uh, system marker system. This is another example that is restriction site changes. Now here, sometimes you see originally my segment was like this. So my original segment will be this green color. Now in between what happened, this is a insertion. This is an insertion. So when there is an insertion, 
Now segment got longer and now you are getting a length polymorphism. This principle has been used in different markers, RFLP, AFLP, different markers we use to detect this, uh, this uh, insertion deletion, so length polymorphism. Okay, friends, now quickly let us go to the molecular markers, different molecular markers. All of you are very familiar with this terminology, restriction fragment length polymorphism. It means the polymorphism created by those size difference of the DNA segments created by the restriction enzyme. That is the polymorphism, RFLP. This is second generation, PCR-based, RAPD, random amplified polymorphic DNA, AFLP, sequence tag microsatellites or simple sequence repeats, and finally, nucleotide, SNP, single nucleotide polymorphism, we call SNPs, SNPs. We will not discuss every marker in detail. I'm just giving you mention, and there are so many other names in between. So, but we are using most common one. Before again going deep into the marker level, we, again we must understand another terminology because quite often we say that this is a dominant marker, this is a co-dominant marker. What is the basic difference between this dominant marker and co-dominant marker? Because you know about this dominant characters, co-dominant expression. But in case of markers, what does it mean? Let us see them with the help of the gel. In the first case you see, if this is the allele or the, this is the band from parent one, say from my father. This is the band from my mother, okay, parent two. Now I am the hybrid from my father and mother. So now, as I told you, if you remember my statement, what I said, I said, I will inherit some of those markers from my father and some from my mother. So that is, I said that it marker, molecular marker follows Mendelian pattern of inheritance. Here you can see, this is the Mendelian pattern of inheritance, what we mentioned earlier. This band from, I am, this is, this is me. I am getting this top band from my father. I am getting this lower band from my mother. So I am a hybrid. So, so now, if it is a co-dominant marker, remember, if it is a co-dominant marker, then I should have, it should be visible, two bands. Two bands should be visible, okay? All right, now come to the second gel. Here you see, parent one band is visible, but parent two band is not visible. Now F1 is showing one band. Now because the other band is not visible, so F1 is here. So here, uh, in case of dominant markers, the principle of polymorphism is present, absent. Principle of, or principle of polymorphism in case of dominant marker is present and absent. But in case of co-dominant marker, it is not like that. Here, if you see this gel in NCU, almost all those lens, you have got two, two bands, two, two bands, two, two bands. But in this lens, there are no bands. So you can say with respect to this band, there is a polymorphism between this. But this is, this polymorphism we call is a dominant. Means it will be present only in one, in other it will be absent. But here in the, the lowermost gel, here you can say there is a hybrid. This is parental type. This is hybrid. This is parental. So if it is a hybrid, you will get both the bands together. So you should be very careful about because I'm giving a question at the end. Bhartsa, Professor Bhartsa told me to give some question at the end. So I'm giving one question related to this marker. So you should be attentive about this so that you can answer that. You will be able to answer, but I'm telling you, I'm giving a question from this also about dominant and co-dominant markers. Okay, quickly let us go to the first generation marker. I will not spend much time here. Restriction fragment length polymorphism. Before understanding this marker, we must have a clear idea about southern blotting because this is the only principle we use here. So where, what we do here in friends, you extract the DNA because this is RFLP, restriction fragment. So you have to digest the DNA with this restriction enzyme. Restriction enzyme has another name. You remember it? Molecular scissor. You see, there is a, that's why they have given symbol as scissor. So those molecular scissor or the restriction enzyme, now cutting the DNA into small, small, small pieces. Now you go for the gel electrophoresis. So this is your agarose gel. Now within the gel, now bands are, they are not visible to you. 
what you will do now how you make it visible you go for the southern hybridization technique here in this you can see this is a buffer here you have put the gel above the gel you have put some tissue paper tissue paper what it will do it will absorb water from the gel so to compensate that loss that gel will get the water from the bottom from the buffer now then it will move to the upper side in between what you do when those dna will move from the gel so that they do not get less lost we use there as a nylon membrane that nylon membrane will catch all those dna escaping from the gel and later we hybridize those dna with some dna probe and finally we go for auto radiography just like earlier we used to do this photography in the dark room so this is similar way we do this develop this photographs so you can see this is the gel here you see every lane every lane is for one individual okay now you see different individual has having different type of bands the first individual is having two bands second one is having only one band third one is having two but different from this one okay so that way we see the bands and we'll see the whether they are polymorphic or not so this is the way we develop the rflp gels okay finally i'll show you an example of using this rflp markers by, by our director general t mahapatra sir okay this is the gel done by him here you see these are the different bands from the, the master varieties it, you see these all these varieties are having similar band but this variety is having a different band so this is a polymorphic these are all monomorphic this is another gel for the same okay so that way it can be used so sir use this for 25 master variety now friends how you can use this rflp markers for disease diagnosis our doctors they also use this type of techniques now this is an individual normal individual this is a disease individual in normal individual if you digest you get two different bands but here one restriction site is lost so you get a single band now here you see this is individual single band normal individual two bands now it means what if you can link that this band is linked with a particular disease in that case you can use it as a marker a any unknown person you get his dna or her dna then use this restriction enzyme and if you get the same band you can predict that this person is going to have the same disease or if you get the normal two band you say that person will be free from the disease so that is the application side of this marker we'll see you now friends let us do one exercise here because we must test whether we could follow this bands i am giving you an exercise how to identify actual mother father you see there are two things here many a times many couples come means claims one child and sometimes there are couples they deny this is not our child so you have to catch those couples either you have to give the couple that this is your baby or you have to catch those couple and give no this is you have you have to own it now in that case also you can use this marker system how you use this let us exercise do a little exercise so here one two three third is it there are two bands this is dna profile of the mother clear this is the dna profile of the father these two bands okay they are polymorphic means bending pattern of the mother I mean wife and bending pattern of the father so husband so there are two different type of bands so you can say they are polymorphic very nice now you have child 1 is having two different bands child 2 two, two different bands child 3 these two different bands and child 4 these two different bands now you have to tell that which child belongs to this couple and which child do not belong to this couple can you do this exercise so just as a clue i'm giving you as i told you if you just remember my case i am a product from my father and mother as i told you molecular markers is inherited in the mendelian fashion it means i have inherited some of the marker from my father and some from my mother 
So at least some of the bands should match my father, some of the band should match my mother. So similar is the case, if this is SI for child number one, it is having two bands. Out of these two, at least one band should match his father and one band should match mother. Now you see the first band matching with the second band of the father, is it not? And the second band of the child matching with the second band of the mother. So you can say this is a true child of this couple. What about this child number three? It is having one band exactly matching with the father, one band matching with the mother. Similarly, this child four, one band matching with mother, one with father. So you can say they are completely belong to this couple. What about child number two? This band match with mother, this band match with mother, but there are no band which match to the father. Then how can it happen? And there are no other band that you can say that this child from another man. There are no other proof also. So we have to think over it. We'll discuss it later. Now at least I've given you some clue that how those bands can be used for some specific purpose. So friends, these RFLP markers, as you could see, there are some advantages and disadvantages. Advantages is that it is having co-dominant. Co-dominant means just, you can see this having one from father, one from mother, okay? It's not like one present, one absent. So you're getting both from both. So it is a co-dominant marker. So we can easily identify the hybrid. Reproducible and robust. Reproducible means if the result develop in your laboratory, and if you share it with another laboratory, they will get the same result, no changes at all. If they follow the same marker, if they follow the same enzyme, then they will get the same result. So there will be no changes. We'll see in it another marker where there it gets changes, but there are disadvantages also. As you have just seen, very long process from extracting DNA, digestion, again, southern blotting, radiography, so many things you have to do. So it's very slow and tedious process. Require high quantity and high quality DNA. This is another uh, disadvantage as you can say. Often uses radioisotope. Radioisotope, you know, it's a very health hazard, dangerous. We need to take precautions, okay? So that is another disadvantage you can say. Not amenable to complete automation. What does it mean? Now you see, most of you, I can guarantee you are putting your mobile on and you are doing some other business as well because you are just listening the voice. This is something very interesting. So you are not keeping it with you. You are putting the computer on and you are doing some other business also. You are listening also. So you can say, you can say this is automation. But in case of RFLP, you cannot do that. You have to be attentive. Every step you have to attend one by one. So that's why. Because nowadays we need some time for WhatsApp or Facebook also. But this system is not going to give you that system. So that's why we are looking for some other system. Very uh, robust system, very useful system. Of course, nowadays people use it very rarely. Second generation marker is your PCR-based markers. So I am not going in detail, but all of you know about this PCR system, where you take its segment of DNA, then denature it, then amplify it with a, with a couple of primers. And you've got millions of copies. So then you run them in jail and you see the banding patterns, how they differ. This is the basic principle. Kerry Mullis did it and he got Nobel Award for this person. Yesterday there was an interview, I was a member. So we were asking many students that what is the difference? Because you see, here also you are doing a segment copy, photocopy, just like a photocopy machine. You are making millions of copies. And in normal biotechnology job, microbiology job, what do you do? You do cloning. In the cloning also you do copies of the same segment. Then what is the difference between these two? So now friends, I am leaving this question to you also because, because Bhatsar have suggested me that you have to give them something to think. Otherwise, what they will, why they will listen to you? So you have to leave something to them so that they can use their interesting ideas. So I'm leaving it to you. You amplify it. Same thing in PCR as well as in your cloning system. Now, what is the distance difference between these two systems? We will just see at the end of the session. Fine. The first generation marker of this PCR marker is your RAPD. 
random amplified polymorphic DNA. Remember that the literal meaning random amplified. It means the primer will bind randomly anywhere in the genome. So here you use a decamer. Decam means 10, means the primer length will have only 10 nucleotides, 10. So that we call decamer. And another interesting you should remember here, we do not use two different primer here. We use only one primer. That primer will be used as forward. That primer will be used as reverse. In case of RAPD, remember, there is a difference between RAPD and SSR marker system. In RAPD, you use only one marker, but in SSR, you use two markers at a time. So same, the same is the case. If you extract the DNA, then you amplify with this PCR. That PCR, same pro principle will be used here. Finally, you will run them in agarose gel, and you can give this uh, visualize by the ethidium bromide. Also remember, ethidium bromide is also a carcinogenic. You should be very careful while dealing with those gels. Here you can see, it's just like a night view. Any town, city, that street lights are lighting here. So many bands, so many lights. Okay, so now how you use those bands? for your purpose, we have to see that way also. We can use it very well. Now you see, this is the gel, okay? So many bands. Now, where is the polymorphism name? If you remember, I told you RAPD, uh, it comes under the dominant marker category, dominant marker. If the dominant marker, if you remember simple principle, present, absent. Now, let me show you. You take this particular band here. This bands present in these three genotypes or three individual. So among them, they are not polymorphic because it is present everywhere. Now, if you take these two bands, is two bands, uh, these bands present in these two individual, but absent here, again present here, absent here, present, absent. So it means with respect to this band, there is polymorphism. So you are not going to use this marker, use this band. You are going to select the plants based on these markers because that is the polymorphic band. So that way you can choose and use. Advantage of what is it needs very small amount and very crude DNA. No need to be very fine, high quality DNA, just like RFLP. In RFLP, that is the disadvantage as I told you, but in RAPD, you can use very small and not very uh, fine quality DNA. Relatively inexpensive, no radioactivity is there and as I told you, this system will give you enough time for your WhatsApp or your Facebook to run. Because you run the PCR, there will be about two and two and a half to three hours time with you. So you can use those time for other business. Disadvantage is that you remember the terminology dominant. RAPD is a dominant marker. So what is the problem of that dominant marker? The problem is that it cannot identify the heterozygote from the home, it cannot differentiate. Better to say, it cannot differentiate homozygote from the heterozygote. Low level of polymorphism, and most important is that inconsistency of results. If the result is developed in Srinivasan Sir's laboratory and he shares it with Bert Sir, so maybe that he may get a different result. Then they say, no, no, what you are telling is something different from what I have observed. That because it's very sensitive. I have given one question at the sensitivity because you see, what is the length of the primer you use here? If you remember correctly, length of the primer. I told you one terminology, decamer. It means only 10 nucleotide. So when there is only small, very short poly primer, it can bind anywhere and everywhere. If there is a little changes, it will change the site also. So there will be Lake, lack of precision, result may be different, very sensitive. So that's why we, we consider this as a negative point for this. I told you there are so many bands, then you have to identify which band to find the polymorphism. Here, is, as arrow indicating, here, this band you can see, there is some polymorphism here. Okay, let us do another exercise so that I can also take some water. You can also use some time for this business. So now I'm making you a forensic scientist. So here you see, you have got 
this DNA profile from the accident sites or the some criminal activity happen. So as a forensic scientist, you have collected the DNA from the spot and this is what is that DNA profile. Now, you know, there are so many suspects, so many suspects. So, so now you are getting their DNA also and making the profile. Now you need to identify the probable, not the, you cannot give the judgment, the probable uh, suspects who can be that uh, involved in this particular crime. Can you identify now if this is the, the sample DNA you have collected and this is the profile. Now these are all those profiles from different suspect persons. Which one you think that this person should be involved in this case? For that matter also, as I told you, you have to do is matching. This band, you have to see band matching. You have to go on matching one by one. Where you get maximum matching, then you can say, yes, that is the suspect individual. Okay. By this time, I think you have identified the person. Okay. I guess the last person, if I'm not wrong, I think the last person in the jail, his banding pattern exactly matched with this one. So I think that should be the culprit. All right. So quickly, we'll go to the next uh, class of markers, but I don't uh, like to discuss this marker because this is not in use in much and very complicated, and this is out of your syllabus. But as a uh, person of science, you must know the name and some principles. So this is called amplified fragment length polymorphism. And a very simple word, I can say, this is a hybrid marker. Hybrid in the sense, it is using the principle of this RFLP, and it is also using the principle of this PCR based technology and they are making a special class of marker. This is called amplified fragment length polymorphism. Not much in use now because of complexities. I'm not going to discuss that one, but this is another gel from Indian Bay developed by this AFLP. Earlier, this type of marker was uh, used common in very common. Friends, now I'm going to the third uh, uh, category of markers. We are coming to that. DNA sequence. Now you see, every day you are getting news that there is a there is a oh, genome sequencing, genome sequencing, this crop, that crop, this organism, that organism. When you see this, this is the way that genes, uh, this sequence will be there. Even not gap, continuously will be there. Now in this continuous sequence, you can find there are certain areas where you will find similar kind of nucleotide. Can you identify some here reason where you get similar type of nucleotide? Means maybe A, 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 A continuously, maybe C, 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 C continuously. Can you identify some reason here where repetition is there? That repetition also can be used as a marker. Now let us go to and see that how those repetition can be used as a marker. So this is the process where you are, you are calling about as a VNTR, variable number of tandem repeats. We'll see what is the tandem repeats. Basically, here in this class of marker, VNTR or STS or uh, SSR or microsatellites, here using tandem repeats. Tandem means what? Say, for example, in this case, ACA, a CA, 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 CA. This CA is repeated several times in tandem means one after another c a c a c a c a okay so in the in the in the first individual this has been repeated seven times here it is repeated eight times here 10 times here 12 times repetition as i just shown you in the previous slides so there will be sequence here this is the total sequence here you have to find out that can i find somewhere that there is a sequence repetition of this type, tandem type. So if you can find out, that can be utilized as a marker. What you will do now, this is you say, here you have got that sequence. Now you will find that primer, you will so that it bind this side and the other side. So that you can amplify this. Why you need to do this? Let us see the other slides. Say, this is my repetition. What here? CTT. Uh, earlier case, I have shown you two nucleotide repeats. Here I am showing you 
three nucleotide triplets. Remember, in microsatellite, it may be two, it may be three, four, even five also. So now here, this CTT has been repeated how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six times. Now, if you put the primer here, the other primer here, so this will amplify from here to here. Okay. So in the other case, this is parent one, in the parent two, it has been repeated many more times. Means now when you primer site is same, only the internal portion has been expanded. When it is doing so, now if you allow the primer, what they will do? Primer one will have a small segments and primer two will have a long segment. And now you see in the jail, this is another question that in the jail, which one will form the band upper side, longer segment or smaller segment. Here I have loaded in this side, okay, and allow them to run. And the first band you see is coming in the bottom side and the second P2 bond with the upper side. Now you have to tell us which, which band represent longer segment. Okay, all right, that is a question. Anyway, we'll come to that later. So many a times students, even our students thinks that when we talk about SSL primer, it means our SSL will bind ab above this repeated segment. Please be it clear. We are, we are amplifying it from either side. Our primer will never bind over this. We have another class of marker where primer binds over this. But here in SSR, please remember this. Uh, this should be very clear from this confusion that we do not amplify this with the marker. We amplify in the flanking side from either side. Okay. So that's why I'm giving some of the example of markers. You see, the marker is not having any repeated segments. But the, whereas what this marker is going to amplify, that is having the repeated segments. Here, if you say this, this particular pair going to re, this amplify a segment where AG has been repeated 16 times. Here, CT has been repeated 44 times, but primer is not repeated. Okay, so that should be clear in our mind. The so friends, advantage of this PCR based marker is that it's very quick local specific because it will not change. If you compare this marker with RAPD, if you see the terminology, RAPD means what? Random. It will bind anywhere and everywhere. But this SSR will bind to a particular specific site of the genome. It's possible to specifically amplify nuclear DNA, chloroplast DNA, or mitochondrial DNA. And most important advantage of this marker is that it is co-dominant in nature. Again, I'm repeating what is co-dominant. It means it will amplify both the alleles, allele from father, allele from mother. Now, what are the other advantages? It requires less amount of DNA because this is a PCR-based technology, high level of polymorphism. It is available across the genome. And as I told you, you need some time for your personal purpose. So friends, you are getting same time because it is run through a PCR, so you have enough time for your WhatsApp. SSR marker disadvantages. What is the disadvantage is that? It needs some money because you have to buy PCR is about 4 lakhs. You have to buy gel electrophoresis entire system about 2.5 lakhs. Anyway, so what is the most, you can say, important disadvantage? Important disadvantage is that you need to design the primer and you can design the primer only when you have the sequence information. So need prior information about the sequence. Now, if I give you a crop about which you do not have any genomic information, then you cannot use the SSR markers. Then which marker we should use? That is another question. Third and final class of markers, friends, that is we call SNP. You are not audible. 
it's okay sir okay now it's okay now it's okay sir all right fine yeah. there's a problem <laughs> some message came and it, it actually happened anyway sir oh okay all right now okay so friends what i was telling that this class of marker now you are not going to have any kind of those bands or like this now you are going to use some sequence information here those sequence means you because as i say every day you have got the dna sequence genome sequence so now you can see what is the difference in those sequences between two individuals so here here is in this place there is a g there is a c there is a c there is a a it means what there is a base substitute as i discussed earlier so that type of differences you can use as a markers any two unrelated individual differ by one base every 1000 this is an average number you are telling about that okay so we can use here is an example so in case of variety 1 you have this is the sequence in variety 2 variety 3 now here you see in almost all places the same base but here as i have given color there is a g a g a a c means either g has been substituted by a or a has been substituted by g so there are some changes those changes we are calling now single nucleotide polymorphism in this case also you can see here there's a entire genesis a but there is a c here here all a has been replaced by one g so that type of substitution can be used as a polymorphism marker so now you know about this this gel if you see quickly you will remember the singer sequencing but nowadays friends we have the high profile sequencing system we call ngs next generation sequencing so you get this not bands now earlier it was a bands now you are getting those waves so based on that you develop that one so snaps markers sequence based robust marker very quickly automation is very very so very high throughput and high quality data you can get but it requires some considerable effort and time and important is that it is a costly of course this is going to be cheaper with every passing day because we are getting now advanced generation sequencing system and they are making it much cheaper and cheaper advantage over overall this is overall across the marker system you say they are larger in number they they are distributed across the genome automation is possible in most cases co dominance is the nature what we need to needed and important thing is that environment and growth stays irrespective of that you can utilize this dna specific markers there is no absence uh, there is a no adverse effect of plant growth it means what it means that if you extract the dna from a very old plant or is a very young plant that doesn't make any differences all right these are some characteristics what we actually expect those molecular markers should have they should have high level of genetic polymorphism that is very very important codominance is important of course not always possible to get it and that advantage of codominance i have told you that you can easily differentiate which one is heterozygous which one is homozygous okay so many other differences are there so other properties but interestingly not all those properties i have given a long list not all those properties will be satisfied by any of those markers but you have to choose the best one means which one is select getting you the most number of those desirable character you have to choose that application as i already have discussed many things assessment of genetic diversity i'll show you one gel identification of variety testing of hybridity means sometimes you know what you make a cross particularly self pollinated crops when you make self pollinated crop cross and you get the seed you are not sure whether that seed is a hybrid seed or this is a self seed so you need to test that can be done with this molecular markers construction of genetic map mapping and tagging of genes so these are application this is how you see the genetic diversity this is a dendrogram now here you see this few varieties they are close together they are putting in one group it means they are genetically related to each other so they are different from other okay Uh, what i told you about the hybridity now if you extract dna from me and you want to test me whether i belong to my father and mother say for example this is band from my father this is the band from my mother so then i should have two bands 
So now if I take the example of plants, if this is the band of the P1, the parent 2, and all those seeds, I'm getting the DNA, and they are getting two alleles, one allele from mother, one allele from father, it means they are all hybrids. This is what we call hybridity testing. Marker assisted selection, everybody are now quite aware, physical mapping, map-based gene cloning, forensic sciences. I already, already have given you two examples. Some more examples are there. We'll, we'll do some exercise also. So friends, because time is running out, quickly we're going to the second part that is DNA fingerprints. We already have discussed about the marker systems. Now those markers you can use for this DNA fingerprints. DNA fingerprint, what is the property you would need? That it should be unique. It should not match with other, right? So that property can also be satisfied by this molecular markers. Now let us see how is that. What you are doing here, variation and uniqueness in their DNA can be used as a DNA fingerprint. All right. So that fingerprints can be used for different purposes because it is having accuracy, very high accuracy. And even a small amount of DNA, if you get, you can utilize that DNA to develop the profile. If you see the history of this, then you will remember this fellow, Alex Jeffrey. This is a person in this University of Leicester. He developed in this system, this DNA fingerprinting. And this was used in various cases. If you remember this beautiful girl, small girl, in her case also, this DNA profile and this uh, your DNA fingerprint was used. So in crime scene, human plan relatedness, Paternity establishment, we already have discussed one case. Human remains identification, we'll see some examples. Anthropological studies, disease causing organism, and food identification. We can use those DNA fingerprints. Here, remember one thing. When you talk about DNA fingerprint, what is basically the basic principle is that, that you will match one band, this is your known, and with the unknown, then you will match every band one by one and try to find out that are there any differences. If there are no differences, then they are same. If there are differences, then they are. So basic principle you use here is the principle of exclusion. That you will say this person should not be involved in this crime. And But if you say two bands completely match, but still you cannot say that this person has created the Crime. You can say there is a matching of the DNA of this suspect and this victim. Now it is the duty of the police to prove that the person has created the crime. Okay, so that is not the business of your expert or scientist. All right. Now, when it was used for legal purpose in 1983, they used it in UK. There is a murder case. Then, then they used this DNA fingerprint. 1987. In USA, what happened? This particular fellow, Victor Lopez, he assaulted three women. But initially, everybody knew the person who assaulted this woman, he was a black. But Victor Lopez was not black. Then how to do that? How to go about? Then, then there was a DNA profile. And as a suspect, his DNA was also utilized. And finally, he was caught right hand. He was there. And so he could not escape. Because initially he tried to evade, tried to mislead the police, but finally he was caught because of this DNA fingerprints. You remember this 9-11 case, more than 4,000 people lost life. So it was difficult to identify the persons there because there was a fire. So the people used those DNA fingerprints and quickly they identify the persons there. You remember 2004 tsunami? We lost lakhs of lives and difficult to identify those decomposed bodies. So again, those DNA markers, DNA fingerprint was used. Okay, here we have National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources or Gene Bank, where you keep the different germplasms. That there may be many more duplicates because you are collecting it from different places, so you are giving it as a different name. But when you take the DNA, you can see. They are the same, but different name. <coughs> I'm sorry. Here you can see some of the bands here. You see this is the second lane and fourth lane. Name different. Tongnon and Longshu. 
they are two different names but bending pattern same they are a similar bending pattern with other genotypes this cushion 11 is another one. so it means what triplicates three copies of the same genotype in different names you are keeping it so there is a space wastage you can say so we need to do that with this dna fingerprints you can you can now say oh this three same so you can keep only one another exercise so that i can take some water so you have got dna fingerprints from those spot now you have the suspects now you need to identify the person in this meantime now i am recalling one uh, what happened incidents one very small kid went to a police station with his father and uh, while coming back he was asking his father papa there are so many photographs here and there in the police station why it is so papa explained that these are most wanted person means they are doing some crimes so police are looking after then the boys was thinking little bit he said there are some photographs in big size some in small size why it is so the father explained those big size means they are the most highly wanted most criminal he said papa the more, the largest one with the mk gandhi the photographs of mk gandhi was having the largest size in the in the police station now you see think what the boys was thinking anyway friends just to distract you from this monotonous lecture okay now you please go to this exercise can you identify the person these are those most wanted in the in the police station okay this is the sample you have collected from the crime side these are another list with the big big photographs so you have to identify the person could you do it mm. okay i think i'll go with you that this suspect number three should be okay all right don't give the verdict you see give you recommendation that okay fine parental confirmation as i told you you remember in indian political history also there are many cases where people deny oh he's not my baby the but now you can do that okay you can catch you can say the mother profile child profile two father which one you consider the actual father father one or father two now you should be quick enough to identify the bands okay all right i think you have done correctly for the two should be the correct because you see that this is a child one band is matching with father one band with matching with mother similar case here this okay one by one band you have to match i'll tell you a calculation also why i should i said about that you should be very careful that there are certain cases where even this DNA fingerprint could not lead to the answer. So there are, there are possibilities of errors. When you are doing this hybridization, when you are doing the PCR, there may be some mistakes. So that's why technical error possibilities are there. Probability of correctness. How can you say that this, what you are getting is the correct? You may have another, another person who may have the same DNA profile. So there is a case in USA. Then the lawyer question, that no, maybe another person may have the same profile. Then judge invited the mathematician and asked them to prove that what is the likelihood that same profile can be found in another person. And they explained in to mathematically that one in five million. Now, if you use one marker, this is the probability. If you use more markers, probability will go and down and down. So it means if you use about five to 10 markers, having similar kind of DNA profile is almost nil. Okay. All right. So there are certain cases I just mentioned about the conspiracy. Now let me give you an example. Even what can happen, even if you use this DNA, what happened here? There was a sexual assault case. So police got the DNA profile from all those suspects, even more than 5,500 people they could not match a single profile. Even the culprit who was there, he said, I have given the DNA, but his DNA was not matching. You know why? What happened actually? Actually, in place of the, that cul culprit, his friend gave the DNA. Say, 
I am the culprit. I am not giving my DNA. I am giving the DNA from Bhatsar. So now Bhatsar DNA is not matching with the crime profile there site. Okay. So that that is why I told you that you can give you recommendation. It is the duty of the police. It is the duty of the judge to identify and give the verdict who is the culprit only. So friends, quickly I am going to finish this uh, my presentation. So overall, now we can say molecular markers are developed based on the variation at the DNA level. That's why I told you that we basically call it as a DNA-based markers. DNA fingerprints are highly reliable evidence, okay? But care should be taken so that we do not make any mistakes, okay? Wrong conclusion. So thank you so much for your patience, and I wish all of you to stay healthy and stay safe. But at, at the end, as uh, Bhatsar asked me to do so, I'm giving you some of the points so that you can utilize it for thinking, food for thought. The first question was, not question you can say, the first thing you can think, which marker or markers should be selected to study genetic variability of a species whose genomic information is not known. You have no information. It's a new variety, uh, means a new crop species I am giving you, a new animal I am giving you. Then which marker system you will use to study the genetic variability? Number two, you need to identify a hybrid. I have given a long list of markers. Now you think which marker is the best and why? Third question, what is the relationship between this primer length and precision of the result in PCR? I have discussed with you about the 10 decamer, or uh, means 10 uh, decamer primer in case of RAPD, okay? And in case of SSR, it is about say uh, 18 to 22 length. All right, VNTR. So what is that relationship between the primer length and the precision of the result? Fourth question, in gel electrophoresis, why DNA moves towards positive poles, okay? In the, in the, when you run the PCR with gel electrophoresis, then you get that there is a movement of the DNA. Why it moves towards the positive pole? The final one, in agarose gel, the large DNA segment form bands towards upper side or the loading side. Why? What is the reason for that? Okay? So these are few things that as a, uh, you can say as a food for thought so that you can continue thinking on this. With this, I conclude my presentation over to Bhatsar and uh, Deepak. Uh, thank you. Sir, thank you so much, sir. Uh, wonderful. Uh, there are a couple of questions. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll go one by one. Sir. Uh, the most prominent and most frequently asked questions, sir. even in the past. All right. Uh, I think there still remain doubts. Okay. See, th there are two terms. Huh. Satellite DNA. All right. And, you know, and satellite chromosomes. Oh. Uh, and uh, with the, these two, there huh. are the problems invariably the teachers have because huh. whether satellite DNA mm -hmm. is VNTR is is it different what's the relation between these mm -hmm. so a, a lot of questions are pertaining to this i right, think we need to answer right, the, right first of all what is satellite dna okay what is satellite chromosome mm -hmm. and vntr right right, and right right satellite dna right 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 fine okay sir so uh, i think tomorrow uh, or the today afternoon we have another class about this yeah, um, I know. Tell him, Karji, madam. Yes. Okay, okay, all right. Oh, she is going to talk about genomics. Earlier, it was the, it just kept in her case that what is that satellite? She might, she might say, but okay, you can. Okay, fine, 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 right. Yes, okay. We do not know. All right, fine. So, friends, you know what? When we talk about this satellite DNA, actually, what happened when you go for this uh, centrifugation system? In the centrifugation system, then they are arranged as per their molecular weight. Okay. So when you use those repeated segments, this as I have discussed with you about this VNTR, SSR, these are basically having this repeated segments. 
small small AT AT GC GC GC. Okay, so when those type of DNAs are used in the centrifugation system, they form a different band in the centrifugation system, small segment, small bands. Okay, even in the, there is a curve, so they form a small curve, and so that that's why we call it as a satellite DNA. Now. When you talk about this VNTR satellite or this micro satellite markers, so that is uh, what is basically needed some clarifications. Okay. Now, three terminology I will tell before you one is your VNTR, one is your micro satellite, one is your mini satellite. These three things are there VNTR, variable number of tandem repeats, then micro satellites and mini satellites. Basically, they are same thing, but they varies in their number of repeats. Now you see, VNTR, you, you know about this? They are same that tandem repeat will be there. As I've explained in you, say ATT, ATT, ATT. This will be repeated. Now, how many times they are repeated? That is the difference between this VNTR and the microsatellite. SSR, what we call. In SSR, your repetition what you call motif, say AT, GC, or ATT, GGC. So this is called motif. So motif is generally two to four, or in some cases, even it may go to six. Two to six motif. Maybe four nucleotide or five nucleotide will be repeated. Now, num that is the size of the motif. Number two, how many times they repeat? That is important. In case of microsatellite, which we are going to use, it never goes beyond 100. In case of microsatellite, but in case of VNTR, these two things multiplies. Number one, size of the motif. Number two, number of repeats. So number of repeats it may go even up to thousands or even beyond that. So basically, they are the things same. We call in a different terminology depending upon the number of repeats and size of the motif. In VNTR, size of the motif is less and number of repeats is more. In microsatellite or SSR. The size of the motif is small, two to four, and number of repeat may be within hundred. So that is a basic differences there. Okay, sir. Uh, Any... Whether satellite DNA mm -hmm. uh, is same as repetitive DNA? Satellite DNA, basically, as I told them, uh, that already explained that they belongs actually to the one side. So they are called satellite DNA. They basically carries those repeated segments. They basically carry all those repetitions. Yes, most mostly transposons and RDNA sequences. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, which are in multiple copies. Mm -hmm. they, they are the ones which form that satellite. Yeah, that is what I'm telling. They are mostly repeated during, mostly repeated. during the centrifuge. Yes, sir. Yeah. The other question is how to identify twins is one question in this sense they are both related to fingerprint how mm -hmm. to identify twins that's mm -hmm. the second part the mm -hmm. first part is in the human genome uh, fingerprinting do we take all the 23 chromosomes into consideration uh, while doing fingerprints that means are the markers derived from all the 23 chromosomes or not okay yeah, uh, there are certain, uh, nowadays people have developed certain rules. As I told you earlier, then number one is how many number of markers should be used. Because if you use only one marker, as I told you, there is a possibility of matching with one in one million. So now, one person in six million. Now, now if you increase the number, of markers used for this DNA fingerprinting, the chances of this problem by matching by chance will go down. So generally we are using five markers, but there are certain countries, they use 13 markers, 13 markers. So, so that the probability of matching by chance becomes nearly zero, number one. Number two, as I said that, uh, should we take all the 23 pair of chromosomes? Basically, they take a marker from those sites which uh, they do not mutate very quickly. Means they have conserved reasons so that the marker can be used every across the genome, you know, across the population at the specific sites. Not 23 markers are needed, 
So as I told you, five is enough, but there are certain countries, they have ruled 13 markers they are using, 10 to 13. So 10, 13 means you cannot get them from the 23 chromosomes. So they have to select them. But while selecting the markers, we have to see the locations. So there are certain specific I mean, hotspot where there is quick variations, but there are certain specific that remain fixed. So they are choosing those areas basically. Okay. So, uh, well, may, maybe I, I can add, or is yes. Dr. Srinivasan there? I cannot see him. Srinivasan sir is there. Yes, sir. Sir, can you just add, add a few more sentences as to this uh, 23 chromosomes and this? Uh, would you like to? DNA fingerprinting. He has explained it. Uh -huh. okay, that, that should be yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. In the sense that it has to be agreed upon by the community, international community, mm -hmm. as to now that the whole genome sequence is available, we can right. identify the chromosome locations also. Yeah. And how much is it the polymorphism? Because mm -hmm. see, when you are comparing Asian and African or, you know, a different set of people, fewer number of markers could be. But mm -hmm. if it's a closely knit community where there are co-sanguinous marriages, yeah. Like, then those markers may not be very robust because a lot of them will be sharing. Similarity, yeah, similarity will be there. So, uh, depending on the requirement, mm -hmm. uh, this, this could also change yeah. uh, depending on the situation as to whether it is robust enough for a particular case to be determined. Right. But for a broader thing, uh, you know, uh, the earlier Alec Jeffries, yeah. me and DR, mm -hmm. they, they, there were large numbers. Uh, of markers which mm -hmm. are used for uh, fingerprinting. Uh, did you tell about the twins? Twins, oh. how did they be identified? Uh, twins, uh, basically DNA fingerprinting is very difficult to identify in the queen because they are identical, if it is identical twins. Yes. Identical, identical twins be difficult for. Yes. Uh, well, it may not be relevant here. It mm -hmm. might be a bit complicated. Even right between the identical twins, mm -hmm. there will be again differences in the DNA level mm -hmm. of methylation. Methylation will be there only. Uh, that could be used. Methylation marker. Uh, methylation based markers. Uh, but again, methylation markers could also vary with the age and other yeah. related things. Right. It is not going to be constant throughout the life of any individual. Uh, Stay specific. So, Yes, there, there, there could be issues there also. So what we have today may not be exactly the same. Or tissue level differences also could we'll be, be there. there. Yes. Uh, the best is fingerprinting, sir. Finger yeah, conventional fingerprint. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that reminds me. Fing okay. Fingerprint has an Indian connection. Uh, uh -huh. Fingerprint was used by a picture in India uh, to identify fake claims of, you know, labor charges, you know, <laughs> it has same Aadhaar system. <laughs> and, and when he, he was a British working in India, and when he said this fingerprints are unique, mm. the journals said that, no, how can you say that? It could change over time. And the person waited for 30 years. <laughs> you know, took the same fingerprints after 30 years of those individuals and said that they don't change. <laughs> 30 <laughs> years. The of a person <laughs> who, could, who could follow it for 30 years. Right, sir. Uh, so fingerprints are absolutely robust, better than right. your right. uh, But there are other issues with regard right. to fingerprints. Uh, the other question normally comes is, the bulk of DNA does not code for any protein. So is it same as junk DNA? How it is different from satellite DNA? So can you repeat this question, please? Bulk of DNA does not code for protein. Correct. So is it junk DNA? And second is, is it different from satellite DNA? This terminology, actually, I think we, we need to change now. Earlier, we said that junk DNA perfectly fine because we did not know about the functions. So that's why we use this terminology junk DNA. 
you see many many things which we do not know now or we we did not know earlier now we know they have they are very specific roles so because other if there is no function at all nature will not maintain those type of things they are maintaining in the genome they are have having specific roles of course maybe we, we are not uh, aware about that with our current understanding we may not know about those uh, their roles definitely later uh, with our advancing knowledge we will be able to identify or find out uh, what role they plays this junk dna so they are not should be all it is a junk dna it is okay there they are having repetitive uh, sequences are there and they are actually basically work as a as a, you can say cushion there are so many mutations happens so many changes happens in the genome that that changes doesn't go directly to the uh, the genes order to the individuals because those uh, changes those mutations are absorbed absorbed by those uh, this, what you call the so called junk dna so definitely it is there so the junk dna part what you are calling they basically have those repetitive sequence only and that is we are using those markers markers nowadays we are developing gene specific markers from the expression profile also we are developing markers but earlier all the dns even this repetitive this ssr vntrs all are those from those repetitive segments only those satellite dna segments only basically i i think there is, there is a supplementary question to your okay. answer okay. Uh, that people have some confusion mm -hmm. because when you say that you are showing all the kinds of pcr based markers mm -hmm. uh, so are we doing when you are going to do dna fingerprinting are we going to do pcr for each of them separately and then you know each marker is taken together or for example paternity you are showing you know bands mm -hmm. so, or are we doing only one pcr reaction and then run in the gel okay. uh, no you see in in pcr we have 96 we is a no, single no, no, pcr no 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 one person one person one dna uh -huh. sample no? uh -huh. do we do you do it, is it multiplex for you yeah, there is only multiplexing is possible no, no. Don't don't use the word multiplex. They might have difficulty. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Normally, okay, normally we go for one market at a time. But nowadays there are technologies are there. If we have markers with band size different, say one is two hundred base pair, another is three hundred, four hundred base pair. So in that case we can use two three markers together. That is called multiplexing. But otherwise one marker at a time. One marker at a time, and then the PCR products are. Mix yeah. and run together. In the run, it is too. Yeah, yeah, that is there. Yeah. Okay. Not that you will run for each PCR no. separate. This no. one. No. Uh, other question is: uh, What are the causes for DNA polymorphism? Oh. Okay, okay. I have already given a list. Of, I think we'll share those slides. So there is yeah. a list of those uh, reasons. Okay. I've mentioned the base substitution, insertion, deletion. so even this uh, replication slippage unequal crossing over so there is different yeah. sources are there yeah uh, now i want since i noticed something in your slide sir uh, and uh, you are you are showing ssr polymorphism mm -hmm. you know, with, with those restriction enzymes and that mm -hmm. uh, ssr you you go to that slide okay. i tell you what are the problems there okay okay all okay. right let me go back share All right. Go go down. Ah, I'm coming. Is is it so? Huh? Is it is it here? Uh, is it here? No, no, not here. SSR. Okay. SSR. Okay, okay. SSR. I'm going there. Where you have shown the primer and. No, I think it is. This one, this is SSR. We have started here. Uh, this one. Yes. yes. Okay. Hold, hold on here. Yeah, it's okay, sir. Okay. Mm. Now the, you have shown P1 and P2 bands. Right, sir. Uh, there were questions yesterday also. Okay, That's okay. I am asking here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, are these two alleles or mm -hmm. are these two genes? Oh, they are not genes, sir. They are alleles. Uh, we oh. call them are alleles no <laughs> see if they are alleles the mm. linking sequences should be identical your primers uh, normally normally sir what they do when we design the primers 
we yes. try to find out the those reasons the flanking zones no no flank flank if the flanking regions are different right they they are most likely belong to different genes if the flanking sequences are identical and the lengths are different they are alleles of uh, normally what we do here uh, this try to find out the flanking regions which remain same but repeat number of repeats means length polymorphism yes. so that we can detect the length polymorphism yes so no, that way it is basically this case, these are mm -hmm. two genes mm -hmm. this is uh, i would like to tell the uh, audience sir, sir because the repeat is same mm -hmm. the flanking regions are different mm -hmm. that means it's it is coming from a different location in the chromosome okay if the flanking sequences are identical Yeah. The lengths were different. Then yes. that would remain. Yes, so this, this is the normal problem with the V and T R. Yeah. In sense, uh, how you distinguish whether they are from different copies of the same gene mm -hmm. located at different places, or they are located at the same position in the chromosome, but with variable length. Yeah. In this case, these are two genes. Uh, If they had the identical flanking sequences, they would be alleles. Okay, their segregation pattern will be different when you consider together. Uh, I think this. If if still there is problem, we will uh, explain on Saturday. Uh, ah, okay. People okay. can write to us. Right, sir. Uh, to distinguish be between these two. Uh, you you got sir any answer those five questions we gave. Any anybody replied? Uh, they they not not yet. Let, okay. they, let them take time. In this case, right. we are no, not sure. looking for answers from them immediately. It is for them to you know think over. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, right. That's why I said food for thought, so they can yes. take time and. <laughs> yes. So I think it, it, this clarifies because there is a question: What is the flanking region? Flanking oh. is the one that is adjacent to the repeat, and if. the flanking regions are identical mm -hmm. that indicates like, that they are alleles of the same gene in the sense if the repeat numbers are different right, flanking right. sequences are identical that means they are alleles of the gene and if they are different they are different genes uh, i think this more or less answers most of the questions uh, that uh, i thought were important need to be answered and any other minor things if still they have they can always write to the genetic trust and it is not only now forever in this sense our invitation is open forever mm -hmm. if you have problems tomorrow with some other chapter something else i think we would like to maintain a constant dialogue so that to the best of our ability we will try to help you in clarifying the points uh, with this uh, if any of the other our panel members have anything to say to seniors and i cannot see all of them uh, sir ex seniors or anybody seniors sir is there yeah uh, or deepak uh, yes sir uh, anybody has to say anything otherwise uh, you have the full control to close this session I uh, told you, sir. Just one thing. I want to know how many participants were there today. Uh, hundred fifty plus. Okay. Right Good now there are one twenty-five. Okay. Uh, Across yes, the country. Sir. Many of them are watching YouTube also, sir. Yes, there could be uh, as many who watching in the YouTube because there was some issue regarding, uh, you know, login. In fact, you have swept my ID. I have this sir. My name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I told Deepak. He said it can change, but uh, yes. so I didn't want that the session should be disrupted. Uh -huh. <laughs> but on on YouTube, you know, you have impersonated me. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is coming on YouTube also, sir. Yes, it was live on YouTube. It has been recorded. So. I do not know. It cannot be changed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like okay. I'm, I'm I'm happy to carry your name, sir. <laughs> no, no. This is this this is the confusion. Fingerprint. 
Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the topic. Um, I think good. there is nothing more. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Work. Thank you everyone. Thank sir. you, thank you everybody. Thank you once again to the Genetic Trust for giving me this opportunity and oh, all yeah. the participants. Thank you for your patience that you are here, you're listening. So as sir was mentioning, that if still any problem, anytime we are available, no problem at all. I have given my email also, and even if you can write directly to the genetic trust. So anytime we'll be available, we are here. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. We will close here and uh, again join at 2.30. Oh, yes. I'll end the meeting. I'll end the meeting. Pardon? I will end the meeting. Yeah. Dr. Deepak will handle the meeting. I'll end, I'll end it, sir. I'll end it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.